The Naxalite Maoist insurgency is an ongoing conflict between Maoist groups known as Naxalites or Naxals and the Indian government. The conflict in its present form began after the 2004 formation of the Communist Party of India Maoist CPI Maoists, a rebel group composed of the People's War Group PWG and the Maoist Communist Centre MCC. In January 2005, talks between the Andhra Pradesh state government and the CPI Maoists broke down and the rebels accused authorities of not addressing their demands for a written truce, release of prisoners and redistribution of land. The ongoing conflict has taken place over a vast territory around half of India's 29 states with hundreds of people being killed annually in clashes between the CPI Maoists and the government every year since 2005. The armed wing of the Naxalite Maoists is called the People's Liberation Guerrilla Army PLGA and is estimated to have between 6500 and 9500 cadres mostly armed with small arms. The Naxalites control territory throughout Bihar, Jharkhand and Andhra Pradesh states and claim to be supported by the poorest of the rural population, especially the Adivasis. According to a study of the newspaper The Times of India, 58% of people surveyed in the state of Andhra Pradesh have a positive perception of the guerrilla, against only 19% against it. The Naxalites have frequently targeted tribal, police and government workers in what they say is a fight for improved land rights and more jobs for neglected agricultural labourers and the poor. The Naxalites claim that they are following a strategy of rural rebellion similar to a protracted people's war against the government. In February 2009, the Indian central government announced a new nationwide initiative to be called the Integrated Action Plan (IAP) for broad coordinated operations aimed at dealing with the Naxalite problem in all affected states, namely Karnataka, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Jharkhand, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. This plan included funding for grassroots economic development projects in Naxalite-affected areas as well as increased special police funding for better containment and reduction of Naxalite influence. After the first full year of implementation of the national IAP program, Karnataka was removed from the list of Naxal-affected states in August 2010. In July 2011, the number of Naxal-affected areas was reduced to figure includes proposed addition of 20 districts 83 districts across nine states. In December 2011, the national government reported that the number of Naxalite-related deaths and injuries nationwide had gone down by nearly 50% from 2010 levels. The Naxalite Maoist insurgency gained international media attention after the 2013 Naxal attack in Darba Valley resulted in the deaths of around 24 Indian National Congress leaders, including the former State Minister Mahendra Karma and the Chhattisgarh Congress Chief Nand Kumar Patel. <laughs> Naxalite Naxalites are a group of far-left radical communists, supportive of Maoist political sentiment and ideology. Their origin can be traced to the splitting in 1967 of the Communist Party of India Marxist, leading to the formation of the Communist Party of India Marxist Initially the movement had its center in West Bengal. In recent years, it has spread into less developed areas of rural central and eastern India, such as Chhattisgarh and Andhra Pradesh through the activities of underground groups like the Communist Party of India In 2007, it was estimated that Naxalites were active across half of the India's 28 states, who account for about 40% of India's geographical area, an area known as the Red Corridor where according to estimates they had influence over 92,000 square kilometers. In 2009, Naxalites were active across approximately 180 districts in 10 states of India in August 2010. Karnataka was removed from the list of Naxal affected states in July 2011. The number of Naxal affected areas was reduced to including proposed addition of 20 districts, 83 districts across 9 states. Topic: Region affected The Naxalites operate in 60 districts in India, mainly in the states of Odisha, 5 affected districts, Jharkhand, 14 affected districts, Bihar, 5 affected districts, Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, 10 affected districts, Madhya Pradesh, 8 affected districts, Maharashtra, 2 affected districts, and West Bengal, 8 affected district. In West Bengal areas west of Howrah are affected by the insurgency. 
Chhattisgarh is the epicenter of the conflict 2007, areas governed by the elected Communist Party of India Marxist in India such as West Bengal, specifically those of Jangalmahal and Lalgar, are some of the worst affected by anti-state violence by Maoist groups who cite the accumulation of unaccounted for wealth in the hands of CPIM leaders and specific failure to counter problems they were elected to address such as caste discrimination and poverty. There is a correlation between areas with extensive coal resources and impact of the insurgency. Naxalites conduct detailed socio-economic surveys before starting operations in a target area. It is claimed that the insurgents extort 14 billion Indian rupees more than $300 million in Chhattisgarh, Salwa Judam, an anti-insurgency operation which was aimed at countering the Naxalite violence in the region was launched in 2005. The militia consisting of local tribal youth received support and training from the Chhattisgarh state government. The state came under fire from pro-Maoist activist groups for "...atrocities and abuse against women," employing child soldiers, and looting and destruction of property, allegations rejected by a fact-finding commission of the National Human Rights Commission of India in 2008. The commission, which had been appointed by the Supreme Court of India, determined that the Salwa Judam was a spontaneous reaction by tribals against Maoist atrocities perpetrated against them. On the 5th of July 2011, the Supreme Court of India declared the militia to be illegal and unconstitutional, and ordered its disbanding. The court directed the Chhattisgarh government to recover all the firearms, ammunition, and accessories. In the court's judgment, the use of Salwa Judam by the government for anti naxal operations was criticized for its violations of human rights and for employing poorly trained youth for counter-insurgency roles. The Supreme Court of India, also ordered the government to investigate all instances of alleged criminal activities of Salwa Judam. In Bihar, the Ranveer Sena, a caste supremacist paramilitary of the upper caste landlords and proscribed terrorist organisation by the Indian government, has been known to kill Dalit civilians in retaliation for Naxalite activity. In Odisha, the number of districts affected by Maoist activities has been reduced from 17 to 9, as claimed by the Director General of Police DGP, Prakash Mishra on December 30, 2012. Similar paramilitary groups have emerged in Andhra Pradesh during the last decade. Some of these groups are Fear Vikas, Green Tigers, Naladandu, Red Tigers, Tiryamala Tigers, Palnadu Tigers, Kakatiya Cobras, Narsa Cobras, Nalamala Nalatrachu Cobras, and Kranthi Sena. Civil liberties activists were murdered by the Naim Gang in 1998 and 2000. On 24 August 2005, members of the Narsi Cobras killed an individual rights activist and schoolteacher in Mabubnagar district. <laughs> Public statements on the insurgency In 2006, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh called the Naxalites the single biggest internal security challenge ever faced by our country." In June 2011, he said, "...development is the master remedy to win over people," adding that the government was "...strengthening the development work in the 60 Maoist-affected districts." In 2010 the Indian government's Home Secretary, Gopal Krishna Pillai, acknowledged that there are legitimate grievances regarding local people's access to forest land and produce and the distribution of benefits from mining and hydro power developments, but claims that the Naxalites' long-term goal is to establish an Indian Marxist state. He said the government decided to tackle the Naxalites head-on, and take back much of the lost areas. In 2011, Indian police accused the Chinese government of providing sanctuary to the movement's leaders, and accused Pakistani ISI of providing financial support. Timeline 2002 The People's War Group PWG intensified its attacks against politicians, police officers, and land and business owners in response to a July ban imposed on the group by the Andhra Pradesh government. The government responded by tightening security, allegedly ordering attacks on suspected PWG members by state police and the Green Tigers. Police forces continued to have virtual impunity for the killing of PWG rebels during police encounters. The Maoist Communist Center rebels intensified their armed campaign against Indian security forces following the killing of their leader by police in December. An estimated 140 people were killed in fighting between the PWG and government forces throughout the year. 
According to government reports, 482 people have died during the conflict that year. 2003 The conflict in Andhra Pradesh intensified as Naxalite rebel groups, in particular the PWG, continued guerrilla attacks on police and government targets while the security forces stepped up counter-insurgency efforts. An October assassination attempt on Chief Minister N. Chandrababu Naidu was consistent with the PWG's practice of targeting government officials to draw attention to their cause. According to independent media reports, as many as 500 people were killed in the conflict this year, half of these Maoist rebels. 2004 Sporadic, low-intensity fighting between the PWG and government forces continued for most of the year. Attacks on police and TDP party officials, believed to be carried out by the PWG, accounted for most major incidents and deaths. A three-month ceasefire, announced in late June, led to failed negotiations between the government and the PWG. A few days into the ceasefire, an attack attributed to the PWG placed the ceasefire in jeopardy. More than 500 people were killed in sporadic, low-intensity fighting, a reduction from previous years. Most victims were members of the police forces or the Telugu Desam Party a regional political party. 2005 Violent clashes between Maoist rebels and state security forces and paramilitary groups increased following the breakdown of peace talks between the PWG and the state government of Andhra Pradesh. Rebels continued to employ a wide range of low-intensity guerrilla tactics against government institutions, officials, security forces and paramilitary groups. For the first time in recent years, Maoist rebels launched two large-scale attacks against urban government targets. Fighting was reported in 12 states covering most of South, Central and North India with the exception of India's Northeast and Northwest. More than 700 people were reported killed this year in violent clashes. Over one-third of those killed were civilians. 2006. Maoist attacks continued, primarily on government and police targets. Civilians were also affected in landmine attacks affecting railway cars and truck convoys. Clashes between state police and rebels also resulted in deaths of members of both parties, and civilians that were caught in the firing. Fighting differs from state to state, depending on security and police force responses. In the state of Andhra Pradesh, security forces have been somewhat successful in maintaining control and combating Maoist rebels. The other state that is most affected, Chhattisgarh, has seen an increase in violence between Maoist rebels and villagers who are supported by the government. In 2006, 500 to 750 people were estimated killed, fewer than half Naxalites, and approximately one-third civilians. Topic. 2007. Fighting continued between Naxalite Maoists and government security forces throughout the year. The majority of hostilities took place in Chhattisgarh, which turned especially deadly when over 400 Naxalites attacked a Chhattisgarh police station, seizing arms and killing dozens. In November 2007, reports emerged that anti says special economic zone movements such as the Bhumi Uched Pratirod Committee in Nandigram in West Bengal, which arose after the land appropriation and human displacement following the SES Act of 2005, have joined forces with the Naxalites since February to keep the police out. Recently, police found weapons belonging to Maoists near Nandigram. Civilians were forced to choose between joining the Maoist insurgents or supporting the Salwa Judam and face coercion from both sides. According to news reports, this conflict resulted in 650 deaths during 2007, of these 240 were civilians, 218 security personnel and 192 militants. 2008 Civilians were most affected in the ongoing fighting between Maoist rebels and government security forces. Of the 16 states touched by this conflict, Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand were the most affected. One positive note for Chhattisgarh was that fatalities, although still high, were significantly down from 2007. 
Similarly, Andhra Pradesh, the state with the most Maoist activity a few years ago, has improved security with a corresponding drop in fatality rates. Unfortunately, as conditions have improved in Chhattisgarh and Andhra Pradesh, the Maoist forces seem to have shifted their operations to the state of Orissa where conditions have worsened. South Asia terrorism portal's fatality count across the six states that saw the majority of the fighting Bihar, Orissa, Jharkhand, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, and Andhra Pradesh was 794. This included 399 civilians, 221 security force personnel and 174 insurgents. 2009 In 2009, Naxalites were active across approximately 180 districts in 10 states of India. In September 2009, India's Prime Minister Manmohan Singh admitted that the Maoists had growing appeal among a large section of Indian society, including tribal communities, the rural poor, as well as sections of the intelligentsia and the youth. He added that dealing with left wing extremism requires a nuanced strategy, a holistic approach. It cannot be treated simply as a law and order problem. In the first half of 2009, 56 Maoist attacks were reported. The South Asia Terrorism Portal reported 998 killed in the conflict, 392 civilians, 312 security forces, and 294 rebels. Topic 2010. During February 2010, the Silda camp attack killed 24 paramilitary personnel of the Eastern Frontier Rifles in an operation the guerrillas stated was the beginning of Operation Peace Hunt, the Maoist answer to the government, Operation Green Hunt, that was recently launched against them. According to Crisis Watch and various news sources, between 500 and 600 people were killed this year. Of those killed, approximately 366 were civilians, 188 were government troops including police, and 27 were Naxalites. According to South Asia Terrorism Portal and government sources, over 1,000 deaths occurred in the conflict this year. This includes 277 security forces, 277 Naxalites, and more than 600 civilians. On 6 April 2010, Naxalite rebels killed 76, consisting of 74 paramilitary personnel of the CRPF and two policemen. Fifty others were wounded in the series of attacks on security convoys in Dantawada district in the central Indian state of Chhattisgarh. The attack resulted in the biggest loss of life security forces have suffered since launching a large-scale offensive against the rebels. On 17 May, a Naxalite landmine destroyed a bus in Dantawada district, killing up to 44 people including several special police officers SPOs and civilians. On 28 May 2010, the derailment of a Kolkata-Mumbai night train killed at least 150 persons. Police alleged that Maoists had caused the derailment by removing a short 46 centimeters or one and a half feet piece of track, but the Maoists denied this. On the 29th of June 2010, at least 26 policemen are killed in a Maoist attack in the central Indian state of Chhattisgarh. On the 29th of August 2010, a joint team of BSF and district police was attacked by the rebels in Buski village, Chhattisgarh, under Durg Kondal police station in the district while they were conducting routine search operations in the wee hours. Following the attack, the forces retaliated and in the action they lost five security personnel, including three BSF Jawans. On 29 to 30 August 2010, rebels ambushed a joint paramilitary police team in Bihar, killing 10, wounding 10 more, taking four prisoners and robbing more than 35 automatic rifles from the state forces. The Naxalites later freed three of the policemen after Naxal leader Kishenji met with worried family members. On 12 September 2010, Naxalites killed three policemen and took four more hostage in an ambush in Chhattisgarh. The four policemen were later released without conditions after Naxal leaders listened to the appeals of family members. The freed policemen also promised the Naxals to never take up arms against the insurgency again. On the 5th of October 2010, rebels killed four police officers as they were on their way to a market in Maharashtra. On the 7th of October 2010, Naxalites attempted derailment of Triveni Express, a train of Singrauli Bareilly route, by removing four fish plates and 42 sleeper clips. On the 8th of October 2010, Naxalites triggered a landmine in the border area between Chhattisgarh and Maharashtra. The attack killed three Indo-Tibetan Border Police ITBP Jawans, wounded two more and destroyed a military jeep. 
2011 During May 2011, Naxalites killed and dismembered ten policemen, including one senior officer in the Garyaband, Chhattisgarh area on the border with Orissa. In June, the total fatalities of both the police and the paramilitary was 43. On the 21st of July 2011, Maoist rebels in the central Indian state of Chhattisgarh blew up a bridge, killing four people and wounding five others. The attack happened when the Congress party chief of the state, Nankumar Patel, was returning from a party function. Despite the continued violence in 2011, the most recent central government campaign to contain and reduce the militant Naxalite presence appears to be having some success. The 2011 toll of 447 civilians and 142 security personnel killed having been nearly 50% lower than the 2010 toll. Some states experiencing this sharp reduction in Naxalite hostilities, such as Madhya Pradesh, attribute their success to their use of IAP funds for rural development. 2012 In mid-March, Maoist rebels kidnapped two Italians in Orissa. They later released one, while the government of Orissa negotiated for the release of the second. The Maoists released the second hostage in the middle of April. The member of the Legislative Assembly MLA of Laxmapur constituency Orissa, Jin Hika, was abducted by the Maoists in March, who demand the release of 30 Maoist cadres presently in, jail in exchange for the freedom of the MLA. The Orissa government is negotiating with the cadres with the help of arbitrators to free the MLA. On 27 March 2012, an explosion blamed on Maoists killed 15 Indian policemen in Maharashtra. 2013 The 2013 Naxal attack in Darba Valley resulted in the deaths of around 24 Indian National Congress leaders including the former State Minister Mahendra Karma and the Chhattisgarh Congress Chief Nand Kumar Patel. 2014 The 28th of February 2014 to six police personnel, including a show, killed in Maoist attack in Chhattisgarh. The 11th of March 2014 to 15 security personnel and one civilian were killed in Chhattisgarh Naxal attack in Tongpal village, close to the Darba Ghat area of Sukma district in South Chhattisgarh, while they were engaged in a road opening exercise in the area. The 11th of May 2014 to seven police commandos killed in a Maoist's landmine blast in the forests of Gadchiroli district of Maharashtra. Topic 2015. The 11th of April 2015 to seven special task force (STF) personnel were killed in a Maoist ambush near Kankerlanka, Sukma, Chhattisgarh. 12 April 2015-1 BSF Jawan was killed in a Maoist attack near Bande, Kankar, Chhattisgarh. 13 April 2015-5 Chhattisgarh Armed Force Jawans were killed in a Maoist ambush near Karandal, Dantawada, Chhattisgarh. 2016 The 3rd of March 2016, an encounter occurred in between Cobra Commandos and Naxals in Sukma district during which O3 Commandos martyred and heavy losses to Naxals were reported. The 30th of March 2016 7 CRPF Jawans were killed in Dantawada attack by Naxalites. Topic 2017 The 22nd of March 2017 to six suspected Maoists were killed in a gunfight with security forces in Dantawada district of Chhattisgarh. The 24th of April 2017 to 25 CRPF Jawans were killed in Sukma, Chhattisgarh, in an attack by Maoists. Topic 2018. The 13th of March 2018 to 2018 Sukma attack 9 CRPF personnel were killed in Sukma Chhattisgarh after their mine protected vehicle MPV was blown up by Maoists The 24th of April 2018 to 34 militants were killed by Indian authorities in central India Topic Human toll 
The first combat deaths of the insurgency were in 1980. Around 1,100 people are known to have died during 2009. The number includes 600 civilians, 300 security personnel, and 200 rebels. There were more than 40,000 displaced people in 2006. According to the Institute of Peace and Conflict Studies, Naxal groups have recruited children in different capacities and exposed them to injury and death. However, the same accusation has been leveled at the state sponsored Salwa Judum anti Maoist group, and special police officers SPOs assisting the government security forces. Seven personnel of Special Task Force STF were killed and eleven others injured in an encounter with outlawed Communist Party of India Maoist rebels at a village near Chhattisgarh's Bastar region on Saturday. Additional Director General of Police Anti-Naxal Operations Rajinda Kuamr Vij said that the encounter took place at Pidmal village between Dornapal and Chintagufa when the rebels tried to attack the security personnel. The forces retaliated leading to a fierce encounter during which seven security personnel died and eleven others injured. The team of 49 STF men which ventured into the Maoists' liberated zone on Saturday morning, had reportedly not informed senior police officers based in Bastar and Sukma before embarking on an operation which eventually proved suicidal. Seven personnel, including the platoon commander, Shankara Rao, were gunned down by the Maoists. Topic. Deaths related to violence According to the BBC, more than 6,000 people have died during the rebels' 20-year fight between 1990 and 2010. Al Jazeera put the death toll at more than 10,000 between 1980 and 2011. Based on the above displayed statistics, it can be determined that more than 13,000 people have been killed since the start of the insurgency in 1980, most of them in the period since 1996. To enforce their control over the population, the Maoists have convened kangaroo courts to mete out summary justice, normally death, beatings, or exile. See also Chhatradar Mahato List of Naxalite and Maoist groups in India Naxalbari uprising in 1967 References Topic. External links Data on Naxalite Maoist Insurgency Fatalities in India Institute for Conflict Management South Asia, SATP Walking with the Comrades, an extended essay by Arundhati Roy on her interactions with Naxalites the Political Economy of the Maoist Conflict in India, an Empirical Analysis, Joseph Gomes, 2013, University of Madrid, Spain Hearts and Minds, a district-level analysis of the Maoist conflict in India, Christian Holscher et al., University of Oslo, Norway, doi, 10.1177, 2 quadrillion 233 Targets of Violence, Evidence from India's Naxalite Conflict Oliver von den Eind Paris School of Economics Living on the Edge of a Disappearing World, 16 June 2011 1456 IST, rediff.com For Development Against the Barriers, of November 2018, premieroutlook.co. In